what's up you guys welcome back to my channel um i'm gonna be reviewing a book by one of my favorite authors which is actually weird i haven't read any of her books this year um taylor jenkins read so i'm gonna be reviewing malibu rising this is a book i read last year around this time like june july ish um and yeah when i haven't read one of her books this year i wanted to get carrie soto is back i haven't gotten that yet but um it's still on my to be to be bought and to be read list so taylor jenkins reed is the author of daisy jones and the six which i've reviewed already on my channel i will link it above and in the description box as well as the author of one of my favorite books uh the seven husbands of evelyn hugo I haven't reviewed this for you guys yet this is a book that i also read last year and i want to read it again before i review it so it will probably be a reread maybe towards the end of the year and then i'll review it for you guys but let's get to malibu writing so we're gonna start off with the cover uh i don't know if this is the new cover or if the one with like there's a cover where it's sort of like a drone shot of two surfers um but i i prefer the one with the drone shot but um like had i not read a taylor jenkins read book and seen this cover in the bookstore i wouldn't have walked up to it and been like oh let me grab this but because i'd read the seven husbands of Evelyn hugo and daisy jones and the six i was like let me try one of her other books and see if i like it um then the font size it's a little bit small i'd say but still okay uh the length of the book is just under 400 pages so like 360 65 ish um between this book between malibu rising daisy jones and the six and um the seven husbands of evelyn hugo number one has to be the seven husbands of evelyn hugo number two daisy jones and the six and number three has to be malibu rising um so from best to worst and by worst i don't mean that this is a bad book it's a great book but there are a few things that i just didn't like um but overall still a great book still love taylor jenkins read obviously this is set in malibu um because we know it says Malibu Rising and it is set in the 80s and Malibu Rising follows the lives of the Riva siblings. Now, if you read um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Mick Riva is one of Evelyn's husbands. And so it's the same family. Riva, Mick is these children's um, father who wasn't really a great father he wasn't a present father um but anyways we see the siblings um i'm going to be focusing on nina because that is the oldest one and the female the strong female protagonist nina um the other siblings names i, I forgot their names but um had I, I guess that it's like short for hudson or whatever but there's basically nina the two that are sort of like um born in the same year i'll explain that just now and then the younger sister who also surfs and is sort of like uh outcast from the family um so nina is the oldest sibling um and it flashes in between present day Malibu which is on the day so this book covers basically between back um, in the time of Mick Reaver and June the siblings mother their love story and how it came to be and then basically sets you up for present day Malibu and the Reaver siblings and what is happening on this day i feel like i was, I was rambling there but but like i'm trying not to like give away too many details um but on this day in malibu um nina riva is prepping for her yearly party this is like the party of the year the premise of the party is if you know about it you are invited everybody knows the siblings they are famous um nina is famous for being a super hot model she was captured um in her younger days in this white tee sort of like 
you know a typical sports illustrated kind of thing white tee a wet white t-shirt sort of with her nipples almost showing it's like risque but you know whatever whatever men are into these days <laughs> Um, and then she became a super successful model then the one brother is a surfer he surfs really well the other one um, is his photographer so the brother who surfs the younger brother or the one that they're born in the same year is his photographer and then the little one also serves but she's sort of like not in the limelight and I say that they're, they're born in the same year because um, Mick went and had another child outside of his marriage with June and the mother of that boy came and dropped him off at June's door being like I, I had a baby with your husband I mean just insane I had a baby with your husband here he is I don't want to look after him Ta-da! now the husband also is just MIA Mick is MIA and June the mom decides what can I do I'm gonna raise this child Okay, I'm going to raise my, my husband's child from his extramarital activities and that's what happens and they obviously just form a bond and that's how it is. The, the story just builds up from, you know, switching in between telling the story of June and McGreever's uh, love story and their marriage to present day leading up to the day of the party and then at the party what happens at the party and culminates in a huge fire. Um, but I just want to talk about some of the themes that are covered in the story. Um, a huge one, obviously, family. Family um, dynamics. You see um, June and how she interacted with her parents and with Mick as her husband. And how she had these kids. Um, their relationship was very tumultuous obviously with Mick being in and out just like ghosting the family the reappearing coming back oh I'm so sorry take me back taking me back ghosting the family Mick was was also sort of just like the Elvis Presley he's portrayed as this like super rock star very famous just yeah I when I think of him I think of like Elvis Presley or um gosh I can't think of the name Mick Jagger <laughs> Or Mick Jagger and he's like oh super fancy super you know all the girls want him he can hook up with any girl he wants to blah 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 so you see that and how uh, Nina who's the oldest child sees this she sees this going on she sees her father ghosting the family and then reappearing um, and then later on she has marital problems of her own her own husband goes to her for this um famous tennis player carrie soto which is why i'm saying i need to get my hands on carrie soto because i need to link okay i know mick reaver was in evelyn hugo now he's here in malibu rising carrie soto is in malibu rising and to find out what happens in carrie soto is back but anyways so her husband um ditches her goes to her to go be with carrie soto then also comes back on the day of um this party but you see how she handles herself in a different way i want to say or better than the way that her mother handled herself with mick so yeah family i think it's one of the main um themes in this book and how our parents patterns and their trauma just infiltrates or just filtrates down the family tree until somebody decides to change it which is what nina basically did with the way that she handled herself when her husband was just like in out in out one foot in one foot out of their marriage i think she handled herself differently than what her mother did or in a better way than what her mother did um and yeah just how the siblings also um interact with each other because there's also a little bit of sibling rivalry i would say um with the 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 brothers the surfer brother and the photographer brother and then also the younger girl the younger girl sibling who looks at them and is like i don't know why i'm not as famous as the surfing brother because i'm just as good um 
which brings me to my next point another theme that is covered or explored in this book is fame and it makes me think of how men and women handle fame or how fame affects men and women differently because for example um nina is a famous model mick is a famous musician and the one brother is a famous surfer but let's just take mick and nina nina handles herself so differently than what her father did i don't know what it what's up with men though like <laughs> Men, I'd say they lose the plot once they become famous because then, like, he was a struggling musician and then uh, now he pops off and ghosts the entire family. Nina, for, for example, didn't now, you know, ghost the family once she became famous. It sort of made her a little bit more, like, grounded, I'd say. Maybe because she'd seen how her father handled fame, how it affected him, how it made him almost lose his mind and just like put his responsibilities, aka his children and his family to the wayside. Whereas Nina was like, no ways, I'm not going to now ditch my siblings. We struggled after the mother passed away. We struggled. I've got my foot in the door and I'm making all of this money. I'm going to be supportive, you know, pay the school fees, whatever, put food on the table. Um, not just ghost them. Um, but also, the way that, in my opinion, men and women are affected by fame is like, Nina was super sexualized and just like, you know, her Sports Illustrated moment was like super big, blown out of proportion and whatever. But whereas Mick and the surfer brother, Nobody was sexualizing them. What's up with... I don't know. That's weird. I think it still happens today. Obviously, this is a fiction, but it, it, it really just depicts that world really well, like the celebrity world, fame, how men are shown by the media versus how women are. It does that really well. Um, and Nina did not get consumed in my opinion by the world of fame you know at this party there are so many wild things that are happening there's literally cocaine being like served on trays like oh hey here would you like a line you know um and she was not into that but also she did not bring the cocaine to the party i just want to say um a lot of drinking just a lot of debauchery and this brings me to the part where i said there were a few things that i didn't enjoy about the book there were a lot of things that yes i'd imagine because i mean i'm not i'm i don't live in the world of celebrities at all i'd imagine at like these huge parties in hollywood that these things happen where there's like trays of cocaine being served with like a line for each person i'd imagine that's what those things those kind of things do happen um but i just felt like it was a little bit uh melodramatic some of the things were super over the top like people swinging from chandeliers um people vomiting in the bushes like um even the end the actual ending of the book i found to be a little bit melodramatic i was just like this is i don't know it's not make sure <laughs> but overall still a great book out of five stars i would give it four you know and the reason i'm giving it four is because of these little bits and pieces that i'm saying i just found it to be a little bit melodramatic just my opinion but nonetheless taylor jenkins reed she just does the things she knows how to make the pops to be done she knows how to write a good and captivating story Oh, the younger sister's name is Kit. I'm opening it up here. The younger sister's name is Kit. I almost said Kate. And then the two brothers are Jay and Hud, like I said. I don't know what their full names are because it never says. I just assumed that Hud is short for Hudson. Um, but yeah, celebrity life, the themes. I'm now recapping the themes. Celebrity life and how it affects women and men differently. Um family and sibling rivalry and generational trauma how that affects people 
And then there's the theme of fire. I want to get into the theme of fire quickly before I end this review. Uh, lastly, the theme of fire. I mentioned that at the end, there's a huge fire um, in the book, at the end of the book, which is also something super melodramatic. But anyways, let's go carry on with the theme of fire. Um, so... Mm, let's talk about what is fire fire can be destructive but also bring renewal if you know what i mean like how you know how like farmers will burn their land so that the crops can grow better and also to stop if there was like another felt fire to stop the fire from continuing how cool now how does that relate to malibu rising mick the father is super debaucherous promiscuous there's a lot of infidelity in meg and june's marriage and that is that causes a lot of destruction like fire and um you know like i said with like the farmers burning a barrier i don't know what it what that is called guys i'm not into agriculture if you know what it is leave it in the comments like the farmers that burn like the land so that if there's a felt fire it can stop um the siblings the four children nina jay had and kit could have let this fire of infidelity just leave them super sour bitter you know just like ruin them but they decided that this is gonna stop and we need each other we need each other to be strong we need each other to you know be there for one another like how the one brother is the other one's photographer they're keeping the money in the family how nina decided that i'm going to take the role of mother and make sure that i provide for this family by becoming a model and blah 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 unfortunately for nina's mother june she let the fire of infidelity really just ruin her um i won't say what happens to her but like i said previously she does pass away and then nina takes the role of mother and looks after the children um now nina sort of got into a similar relationship as her mother or married a similar kind of guy that w was cheating on her ghosting her blah 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 she could have continued like her mother to take this man back and let him run amok but she did not she said whoa okay this stops here and i really love that it just reminds me again of like generational trauma um there's this quote i don't know who said it but it always like stuck with me that says that pain in family is felt mm -mm, i'm saying the quote wrong but basically like pain will continue in in fam in a family line until somebody's ready to feel it you know a lot of the times we know how it is everyone's just like oh but that's just how i was raised look how i was raised that way and i turned out fine no you did not caroline you did not turn out fine you don't know conflict resolution skills you don't have good conflict resolution skills you were passive aggressive you you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying until someone in the family is like oh my goodness i want to change this i don't want my kids to grow up like this um i want better for my children okay and that concludes this review you guys okay please give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel um and make sure that you subscribe to my vlog channel i'll leave that in the description box as well and um i just want to say like you know like when i'm reading i don't necessarily um i used to tab a little bit i tab probably like two books um but now i just use my highlighter inside the actual book and in high school i really used to struggle to just like you know make an annotation or just like figure out what is the story about like figure out the themes figure out the i don't know i i think i struggled i didn't do badly in english like i got a solid b in matric but i just remember being like i don't know what the heck is talking about especially for like she experienced stuff no and now look at me sitting here reviewing books and also studying law
wild wild but anyways that's just i thought i'd just add that in there it's interesting <laughs> Anyways, you guys, please do subscribe and make sure to like this video and check out the other reviews that I've got on this channel. Okay, bye.